Now this channel is uh, actually Norwegian, but I'm going to try English anyways. Uh, now it's been a while since the first time we drove the Hongxi EHS9, and this is launching in Norway, so most uh, countries don't have it yet. We are driving the luxury version with the six seat, and uh, now we finally are allowed to test the range and how fast it charges on a 150 kilowatt charger. The Hongxi EHS9 is um, actually longer than a Mercedes-Benz GLS. That's true, it is longer. It's huge! And you're bound to experience that when you drive the car. The seats in this luxury edition is um, adjustable every direction. Uh, the length of the seat cushion is uh, manual. But the rest of the settings are done electrically and you can store your uh, seat position that is done from the middle screen below here and you have three screens <laughs> in a row here um, with all sorts of information we'll get to know them in a while uh, one thing that's nice to know is that you adjust the mirrors the side mirrors uh, with this button here with three stripes on it you get the possibility to adjust the mirror on the left side or the right side. You just uh, click it and then you use these other buttons here plus the wheel to adjust the side mirror. You can go back with this button. That's nice to know because very often you do something <laughs> with the side mirrors in the door and you don't do that here. A little compartment for your wallet maybe. Now I'm going to show you how you put this car into extreme mode. I mean, I have 99% in the battery, so I can do it now. Uh, you push this uh, car here, and then you get a menu on the screen, and you can choose Sport. And now I have to put down my handheld camera. <laughs> but you can see here, it says Sport. And then I have to place one finger on each wheel on the steering wheel. Just push them in, in, both of them, at the same time. Boom, boom. And now it says extreme, it says ready, it says go. So let's try the acceleration in extreme. Ooh. <laughs> I have to put it in dry, of course. <laughs> and I'm not going to accelerate here, but we have a highway just up the road. So I'm going there to test the acceleration. There's quite a bit of traffic, so I'm not sure how much we can try here let's find out if it's impossible here i can fix it later yeah it looks nice and we put the pedal down and ooh -hee -hoo -hee. yep it oops uh, that's above the <clears throat> yes okay mm. you didn't see the speed limit did you no good well uh, it goes up to speed rather fast uh, in extreme mode. Um, uh, rather fast, actually. And uh, there's a thing about a large car like this. You sort of don't feel the speed in the same way as you do in a small car. So you better watch those numbers so you don't you lose your license. <laughs> this car is launching in Norway and in a way uh, people in Norway are, are beta testers because this <laughs> this is not a completely finished product. <laughs> so I think um, it will take a little longer before it reaches other markets. Now we are going on our rural road test. That means the speed limit is never above 80 kilometers per hour. And normally we uh, do this test with uh, cruise control, but these roads have many twists and turns and this car has a cruise control that sort of breaks down late in a corner you come in a little bit uh, fast and then it breaks down in the corner or in the end of the corner and it takes a while before it accelerates again and it breaks down quite a lot from like 80 kilometers per hour to 60 and then you have to speed up to 8 again when it realizes, oh, I'm not in a turn anymore. Okay, let's go. And that 
is taking a lot of juice because I could there's a instant reader here for how much uh, energy you're using right now minus 24 kilowatts <laughs> because it's braking we have a car in front of us or a, a RV but it had a cons consumption over 60 kilowatts uh, for each acceleration so I soon realized okay I have to <laughs> I have to do this uh, more manually. I can't use the cruise control on these roads. It's perfect for uh, highways and stuff, but roads with twists and turns, not such a good idea when it comes to consumption and uh, range. So, and the radio, I mean, in Norway, we have something called a DAB radio, and not all countries have this. Uh, I don't think China has it because I have still not driven a car from China that has a good DAB radio. Not sure why. But um, yeah. Ah, oh, excellent. Wet roads. This is a heavy car. It has large tires and rims. Wet roads means more rolling resistance. But it's impossible to avoid wet roads these days because it's raining here and there and you never know where the roads are going to be dry or where they're going to be wet so we just have to drive <laughs> when we have the car we can't wait until the roads are dry everywhere uh, this car has gone over 11,000 kilometers already so that can influence some of the sounds I'm hearing um, the armrest in the door is sort of making sounds if I touch it and I, I'm not sure if I feel that's as premium as this car sort of wants to be. Uh, same with the braking pedal, also some squeaky noises there. Um, and there's another noise, uh, I just have to use the cruise control now because I mean... Do, do, do. do I need to hear that noise when I'm activating the cruise control? No, I don't need to hear that noise. I know I'm activating the cruise control. I push the lever here down to activate the cruise control. I'm doing it on purpose. I don't need to know by sound that I'm, I did it. And if I touch the brake pedal to turn off the cruise control on purpose, do, do, do. why? Why do people in China need these sounds? Oh, I don't get it. And if you turn on and off the cruise control quite a bit, and I do uh, when I'm testing, because normally we drive with cruise control, and when you get to a roundabout or a crossing or something, you have to break down. And... <laughs> and this is only from a couple of days of driving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already frustrated. It's possible that you can turn these um, annoying sounds off. <laughs> I have not gone into full depth of the infotainment system, uh, but possibly you can turn these things off. I hope so <laughs> for the owners of the car, because if you can't, it's rather annoying in the long run. How's the ride comfort? Well, I'd say it's comfortable. Yeah, I would. Uh, this is a top spec model that has uh, air suspension, and it sort of, you sort of feel that you know it's it's like you're on a flying carpet, just floating along. Even when you have uh, speed bumps and stuff, you're thinking, "Hmm, could I have gone faster across these speed bumps?" <laughs> Maybe that's not the purpose, but <laughs> you kind of get that feeling, and. Um, yeah, it's, it's very comfortable no matter what the road is uh, presenting to you. And when you have that level of comfort, you kind of don't expect to hear wind noise from the window. I mean, I was thinking at first, uh -huh, is the window open? No, no, it is closed. So <laughs> that's kind of strange. Uh, the seat comfort. Uh, if you have a narrow back end, you'll probably not understand what I'm talking about, but I have a wide back end. So I sort of feel um, the edges on the seat that's supposed to hold you in the seat. 
um, because I've been driving a few hundred kilometers now for a couple of days and uh, when I get in on day three you sort of feel mm, that part of my bum is kind of sore um, so I'd say there are car manufacturers out there that make more comfortable seats than Hongxi are doing um, like Volvo like uh, BMW like Mercedes uh, I'm not sure if you're annoyed at me for saying this but I say these car manufacturers have the potential to make the best and most comfortable seats for people like me who's got a wide bum uh, yeah <laughs> but all in all uh, the ride is very very comfortable it's silent and nice inside the car when you drive it and um, you kind of have to pay attention to the numbers here because yeah you don't feel the speed as much as you would in many many other cars normally when I test drive cars I have the climate uh, system on around 20 21 degrees Celsius uh, here however I have had to increase and increase the temperature uh, I had it on 23 for quite a while and then suddenly it got very cold I mean when you have it at 23 you're not supposed to get cold so I took it up to 24 it's now more comfortable again but uh, yeah I'm not sure if Chinese people have a different relationship with uh, Celsius than Europeans do but this is something I experience in several cars from China that I have to have a higher degree Celsius on the climate system in these cars strange it could be uh, just this car and some issues it has with the climate system I don't know that I haven't driven a bunch of these cars this is sort of the first one I actually get to test so I don't know yet if this is a standard for Hongxi EHS 9 or if it's just this car but I kind of think it's strange that you have to have such a different temperature on the climate control in Chinese cars than you do have to have on European cars hmm, strange when you're done charging you just push this little button to uh, loosen the charge cable and then you can push this little button again to close the lid also possible to open the lid by pushing hard here because then you sort of push this button right <laughs> In Norway, uh, we have made a frunk for, for this uh, car. It's actually is custom made for Norway, but um, even in other countries, you will have space under the floor in the back for the charging cables. You have buttons on this one because it's the top spec and um, buttons to uh, raise and lower the rear seats and in the third row but then you have to move the two seats in the second row a little bit forward to do that one of my favorite parts about the luxury edition is um, these two captain seats in the second row where you have uh, armrests you can adjust the seats electrically very comfortable beautiful cushions for the head it's a nice place to be actually water bottles can be rather large these days uh, but then this car actually has a pretty neat little party trick push it down choop choop all the way down <laughs> I think that's a cool party trick <laughs> uh, if I take out the bottle uh, there is a button here and then it goes up to the second level and up to the top level kind of cool underneath here you have another 12 volt socket in addition to the charging possibilities down here when you get into this car you don't have to push 
start, no. Just place a foot on the brake pedal and it starts. Now this car has air suspension and then uh, <laughs> the ground clearance can be rather different uh, depending on the settings and the speed. So if you go in sport mode and you go over 100 kilometers per hour you have the minimum ground clearance. Now that that's not a very low ground clearance but still for this car it's low and um, you can see the numbers on the screen here now and then if you go like in a off-road mode sort of type thing you get a lot of extra ground clearance so you yeah can uh, get over the obstacles that you have so the ground clearance is not uh, just uh, one number on this car with the air suspension on the other cars that does not have air suspension uh, it is a fixed number naturally and um, well that's a big difference if you choose air suspension or not with this uh, air suspension when you ch change the um, program to sport it changes the suspension completely because it sort of you go away from that uh, sort of um, up and down motion <laughs> when you go over a speed bump to a more <clears throat> uh, feeling it's more uh, accurate it's more precise it's more yeah it takes the unevenness faster quite different and not very surprising uh, when you have air suspension that you can do this with a car it changes completely how it is to drive uh, no it's not uh, uncomfortable not at all <laughs> still very comfortable and you have to look at the numbers in this <laughs> because you have powerful acceleration and you have <laughs> <laughs> have to watch the numbers because you don't feel the speed in this car as you do in other cars due to comfort and I'm behind a slow guy from Sweden in a Volvo of course when I come to these roads with twists and turns I just slow down a little bit so I can take the turns with a little bit more speed I have tried it a little bit now, getting here, and it handles surprisingly well. I mean, this is a huge car. It's a heavy car. And how it can handle this well on twisted, turny roads. It's uh, rather astonishing, actually. Oh, Volvo. <laughs> Poor guy. I'm wondering what the sh is going on here. <laughs> oh, but but this car, actually, I mean, the parade of this car is not <laughs> doing a rally <laughs> straight out. I mean, it's a heavy car, but it can handle surprisingly well in sports mode on twisty turning roads. <laughs> it's actually borderline fun. <laughs> And it's fun that it, it's capable of doing this. So, actually, I have to give the engineers a round of applause for this because, yeah, it's um, rather astounding that it's possible. <laughs> uh, slow Volvos. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's in front of me here. Slowing me down. Okay, it's almost... Uh, Five minutes to 10.30 actually, oh, it's getting late and I'm here with my sunglasses, well my eyes are sort of sensitive to light, that's why I wear sunglasses almost all the time and very rarely take them off when I drive, calms my head quite a bit, but let's sum up this car, not me. This is a very comfortable car. It has ample space uh, that can give you some parking, uh, interesting parking uh, problems. 
<laughs> especially in narrow parking houses and stuff I, I would avoid those places with a car like this because it's huge yeah it's wide it's super long it's just huge and this huge bit I mean okay just don't go tell people I'm so environmental friendly I've chosen an EV yeah if you're gonna brag about that choose something that has a lower energy consumption please this car yes it is an EV but it's made for fun for comfort for luxury not for saving the planet come on with a bonnet like that it's huge it gives you tons of extra air resistance I mean it's not something you would choose if you want to save the planet no it's something you would choose because you think it's a cool car it looks like a Rolls-Royce I mean the designer where did he work before he started with Hongxi yes he worked with Rolls-Royce so it's sort of a cool car it, you don't want to be a person afraid of attention though because it's a rather spectacular car So it's comfortable and it's fun in sports mode, who knew? <laughs> I didn't know. And you have super much space. I would prefer actually this one because it has two captain seats in the second row. It's not something you choose if you want the most practical car because then you want the three-seater back there because you can fold down the backs on the three-seater and you can't the cabin chairs so you don't get as much load space if you're gonna I don't know move or something uh, use it as a moving van um, but still I have three kids and they are not very young anymore so for me this kind of seat uh, setup is perfect for others maybe not so perfect I like a lot of things about this car and a few things maybe not too enthusiastic about like um, uh, seat comfort you have to try these seats because if you have a white bum like me it's not perfect seats just telling you it's just how it is um, and I don't think it's attractive that a car this comfortable as wind noise from the side window what's that all about you can't fix that with the software no. so it has some um, yeah no just I don't know what you call it but yeah anyways in Norway this car is an EV and it has no taxes um, and um, makes it a reasonably priced car uh, below 800,000 Norwegian kroner. Not sure what it's gonna cost in other markets. I can't tell you about that. I can uh, compare it to other cars in other markets because the market I know is Norway. Sorry about that. Anyways, uh, some um, stats before we end here. Uh, we tested this on rural roads and the range is on the screen now. We tested this on 50% rural and 50% highway with 100 kilometers per hour speed limit and the numbers is on the screen and um, we also did a charge test uh, we used a 150 kilowatt charger to charge it from 10% to 80% and the time consumed by that charge is on the screen so that's it for me new build tester that means new car tester I make Norwegian tests but if you think I should make more English tests let me know below see ya